everybody. Thanks for stopping by today. Uh, if we haven't met before, my name is Mr. Paul. Uh, I'm a visual artist. I've been making art. God, I can't even remember the when I actually started, but it's been about 50 years ago, and I've been teaching art to young people like yourself for a real long time, too. Um, we have these small videos that we're putting together for you, not just me, but other art or artists and dancers and all kinds of stuff. The Arts Council of Oklahoma City are putting these out uh, for the schools and really anybody that wants to go online and kind of maybe learn some tips about some things that you might be interested in, especially if you're an artist or you or you're, you want to be an artist. Uh, today, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to be, I'm going to be doing some real simple watercolors. Watercolor is considered a... Um, a transparent medium, meaning the paint you can see through. And even when you paint them on the uh, on the on your paper, uh, you can still see the paper behind it. It's not like oil paint or acrylic paint that is what is called opaque. You can't see through it, right? So uh, it's just you know it's just a, one type of paint medium that uh, really has been around for a very, very long time. And so uh, I've got kind of a fancy palette here, but any palette will do. And I have to say right off the bat, spending a little bit more money on your watercolor, if you're gonna be doing some watercolor, uh, go for it if you can f afford it. A regular little, you know, little a uh, little strip, that's fine too for beginners. But if you want to get to a point where you can really get that deep, rich color that you want, uh, you almost have to go with uh, a little bit more. I didn't pay much for this. I paid like 20 bucks for it as opposed to a dollar ninety-eight for those little strips that we all see in school. So anyway, uh, tools got to know your tools. I think one of the hardest things about painting in general, whether it's watercolor or whether it's um, oil or tempera or, you know, poster paint, it doesn't make a difference. It's your brushes. A brush is a tool, just like a pair of scissors or a wrench or a pair of pliers. You have to know how to use it to get what you want. And I believe that this brush right here is a really good all-purpose watercolor brush. It you can fill you can fill this thing up with lots of water, right? Or you can just use the tip. And so when you're painting like this, one with a tip that always stays with a tip you can get into those hard to reach places, but then when it goes out and you have more room, you just push down on your brush a little bit more, right? Now, because it's a watercolor, uh, transparent uh, medium, um, rule of thumb, if you want a really, really dark color, you use more paint then you use water, right? The more water you use, it will dilute the color, the pigment of, in the color. And it'll, let's say, if I wanted something really, really light, there, add a little bit more water, it gets lighter and lighter. And so, if you're wanting something really, really dark, really scrub that that uh, paint into the brush with less water. So just a, just a, tr a little trick to keep that in mind. Now if you want like a real solid color uh, that you don't see the, the, the paper underneath, then maybe you do need to go to a tempera or a, um, a solid or an opaque paint. But if you're wanting something really light and delicate, this is the this is the medium, and I want to tell you right now, I am not a great watercolor painter. I never have been. It's considered one of the hardest mediums to work with 
because if you mess up, if you screw up, there's nothing you can do about it because remember it's transparent. So if you screw up, you almost have to maybe, you know, start over. Uh, so you have to go slow. I mean, you have to go slow. I don't know anybody, especially anybody that's just starting out in watercolor, that that it's a fast painting material, especially if you want to get it really right. So these are some of the, uh, I'm just doing these real simple things. When I was thinking about doing a watercolor thing uh, today, I just pulled out these little tiny, I call them studies, right? They're little studies of sunflowers, all different. I tried to use a different uh, uh, composition, like instead of having them right in the, the center, I put some on the side, just to kind of make it more interesting, you know? And so these are just things that I just kind of, it didn't really take me long to do these. It's just, uh, I was kind of like practicing that day. And these are probably a couple of years old and I've never done anything with them, which I think I might, I might do something with them after I played with them today. Um, so you got your transparent medium. You've got a really good brush. Keep your water clean. If the water starts getting opaque, meaning you can't see it, you can't see through it, pour it out, put new water in. This, I would say, is still transparent. And I'm only using one color, so it's not bad. But keep in mind that you, if, when you go from one color to the next, you really have to stop and clean your brush. If, you, if you've been using brown or black and you want to go to yellow, well, you better clean that brown or black out of it because you're going to get this really muddy color when you put the yellow in. So anyway, uh, so a dry technique, there's two techniques, really there's more than just a two, but there's a technique, you know, the technique, and one of them is called a dry technique. And what you see how that you can see the brush stroke behind it. And what that is is that it's you don't put much paint on your I am not paint but uh, water on your paintbrush. And so it starts to kind of oh I don't know. You can well you can tell the difference how dry it looks. You got those streaks. And that's a good technique. I mean that's a that that can in a in a art piece that can create texture or the look of texture which might make your painting look really kind of cool you know and then of course the, the wet is this is something that I think that you've probably seen I've seen a lot of videos online where you put a, you saturate your water and then you dab it and and actually what you can do is you can Move your paper and see how it moves. That's just that's just a wet technique. Uh, again, these are just two different ways of applying the paint. Um, I would say probably uh, mud <laughs> and ground up minerals out of the earth was the first pigment of paint. I'm talking about a thousand years ago. That, you know, they've got these cave uh, drawings and stuff that are all over the world. They're not using any kind of paint. They didn't have paint back then. But there's clay and there's different minerals that you can crush up. Like a long time ago, I mean, even back in the oh, 14th century, if they wanted like a really beautiful blue, they they found a stone called lapis lazuli and they would grind it up and they would put oil linseed oil with it and mix it up and it would it turned into this beautiful beautiful cobalt blue so it was only up until the last i want to say 50 years 60 years maybe maybe a little longer that you could actually buy paints right? If you were an artist, like back during the French um, 
uh, impressionists back in the you know the 19th century, they made their own paint. You could buy the materials and you could buy the oil, but you were the one that ground stuff up. The artist did that, or if you were like real famous or real, you know, uh, you know, an elite painter like a like a Leonardo da Vinci or a Michelangelo, you had a people that worked for you that did all that grunt work, right? And all you did was paint with it. But it's been around for a long, long time, taking colors of the earth. Uh, and trying to capture them to paint with. And so that and those, some of them were uh, transparent mediums and some of them weren't, right? And so one of my favorite painters of this century that's known for her watercolors, she worked in oils too, but she's, I think, really famous for uh, her watercolors and that's Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, I think she was originally from Louisiana, or she went to school in Louisiana, and she lived in Oklahoma for a while. This is back, you know, in the 1910s, 1920s. But she's really, really known for her really, really close-ups of flowers and bones and mountain ranges and stuff like that. She's uh, considered an American, you know, uh, one of the great American painters of our time. Has anybody ever heard of the term creative play? That's what I want you to do. Don't have any expectations of building or painting a masterpiece. Just go in play with these things maybe that you've never really played with them before, enjoy yourself, have fun with it, and by all means, experiment, and if you screw up, just, just remember, it's just one piece of paper that you're going to paint on or draw out of the probably hundreds or thousands of pieces of paper that you will go through as a working artist. Mm -hmm.